Hi, welcome to part one of the MAP tutorial, Recipe Control. In this video, we'll be learning how to set up a recipe management system quickly and easily using MAP. As you can see, I've already prepared a sample project. It's a basic setup with an X20 controller. Before we can start using MAP components, we first have to add the configuration object, MP Recipe XML. Here, we add the map link, which uniquely identifies the map component within the map environment. The map link establishes the connection between programming and configuration. Now, we're already at the last step, the programming. For this part, I've already prepared a ladder program called Recipe Control. Of course, with MAP, you're free to use any programming language you like. I've already created the structure Coffee Ingredients Type, which contains the parameters that you see here. Coffee ingredients is our process variable. What we want to do is save the variable with the values we've just seen as a recipe. The process variable needs to be used in the software so that memory is allocated for it, so I'll call it in the initialization subroutine. To allow the user to load and save recipes, we'll add the map component MP Recipe XML. Using the map link input, we establish the connection to the configuration object that we created before, named glink recipe. We'll enable the component by setting the enable input. We also need to name a storage device, so we have a place to put our recipe. On the file name input, we can name the file in which we want to save the recipe. In our case, we'll call it my recipe. The storage device we specified has already been added to the hardware configuration with the name CF. Now we're all ready to save and load recipes. Unfortunately, we haven't yet determined the content of our recipe. To do this, we need the component MP Recipe Regpar. For the map link, we'll use the same one that we connected to MP Recipe XML. Again, we'll enable the component by setting the enable input. PV name determines the information that our recipe will contain. Now we'll save our coffee recipe. Since the variable for it is found in the recipe control program, we need to specify the program name before the variable name. And we'll save the whole thing and transfer it to the controller. We just have to confirm the transfer and then we're ready to start testing our recipe management system. I'll turn on monitor mode so we can do our testing. You can see I've added the coffee ingredients variable in the watch window. An FTP program is used so that the file can be accessed later on. This can be downloaded for free from the internet. I've already connected to the controller. And as we can see, there's no file there yet. We'll click on the save command to save the values of the process variable in the file my recipe. Now if we refresh the view in the FTP program, we can see that our file is there now and we can edit the file directly on the controller over our FTP connection. Let's raise the price. After all, good coffee isn't cheap. Next, we'll go back to Automation Studio. Setting the load command updates the coffee ingredients variable with the values we entered. A core feature of MAP is the ability to perform diagnostics and configuration via a web browser using the MAP service Web Access. To get to this page, simply open the browser and enter the IP address of the controller, followed by forward slash MAP. On the left, you'll see a list of all the MAP components that are currently enabled. Each component is now sending all of its live data to the web browser. This allows you to perform reliable diagnostics at the application level very quickly and without needing any special tools. We can check the current status of the function by expanding the info structure. So, using only two MAP components, we were able to integrate a fully functional recipe management system into our application. To learn how to work with recipes in an HMI application, check out part two of our recipe control tutorial.